You've got the bass too high. For voice it should be mid-range. Not too much bass. You can talk, turn down the bass and put the volume a little up. You see now the voice is quiet. Take the volume up and the bass down. Hare Krishna. Okay. All together please. Om Jnana Timarandasya Ganandana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stabitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yukta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahaganath Raghunatham Vitam Tham Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Prijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpite Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapcha Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishavana Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Padita Nam Pavnebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So reading from Sri Mad Bhagavad Gita as it is Translation and commentary His Divine Grace Sri Laisi Bhakti Vedanta Goswami Maharaj Sri La Prabhupada Ki So today's verse is 342 huh? chapter 3 entitled Karma Yoga so Indriyani Paranyahur Indriyabhyaha Parammanaha Manasas Tu Para Buddhir Yo Buddhe Paras Sorry Paratas Tu Saha So word for word please repeat Indriyani Senses Parani Superior Ahu Are said Indriyabhya More than the senses Param Superior Manaha, the mind. Manasaha, more than the mind. Tu, also. Para, superior. Buddhi, intelligence. Yaha, who? Buddhe, more than the intelligence. Parataha, superior. Tu, but. Saha, he. So, translation, Srila Prabhupada. The working senses are superior to dull matter. Mind is higher than the senses. Intelligence is still higher than the mind. And he, the soul, is even higher than the intelligence. Please repeat. The working senses are superior to dull matter. The mind is higher than the senses. Intelligence is still higher than the mind. And he, the soul, is even higher than the intelligence. The poetry of Prabhupada. The senses are different outlets for the activities of lust. 
Lust is reserved within the body, but it is given vent through the senses. Therefore, the senses are superior to the body as a whole. These outlets are not in use when there is superior consciousness or Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness, the soul makes direct connection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the hierarchy of bodily functions as described here ultimately ends in the Supreme Soul. Bodily action means the functions of the senses and stopping the senses means stopping all bodily actions. But since the mind is active, that even though the body may be silent and at rest, the mind will act, as it does during dreaming. But above the mind is the determination of the intelligence, and above the intelligence is the soul proper. If therefore the soul is directly engaged with the Supreme, naturally all other subordinates, namely the intelligence, mind and senses, will automatically be engaged. In the Kata Upanishad, there is a similar passage in which it is said that the objects of sense gratification are superior to the senses and the mind is superior to the sense objects. If therefore the mind is directly engaged in the service of the Lord constantly, then there is no chance that the senses will become engaged in other ways. This mental attitude has already been explained. If the mind is engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord, there is no chance of it being engaged in the lower propensities. In the Kata Upanishad, the soul has been described as Mahan, great. Therefore, the soul is above all, namely the sense objects, the senses, the mind and the intelligence. Therefore, directly understanding the constitutional position of the soul is the solution to the whole problem. With intelligence, one has to seek out the constitutional position of the soul. Sorry, un, sorry. Therefore, directly understand. Yes. Uh -huh. With intelligence, one has to seek out the constitutional position of the soul and then engage the mind always in Krishna consciousness. That solves the whole problem. A neophyte spiritualist is generally advised to keep aloof from the objects of the senses. But aside from that, one has to strengthen the mind by the use of intelligence. If by intelligence one engages one's mind in Krishna consciousness, then complete surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then automatically the mind becomes stronger and even though the senses are very strong like serpents they will no more they will be no more effective than serpents with broken fangs even though the soul is the master of intelligence and the mind and the senses also still unless it is strengthened by association with krishna in krishna consciousness there is every chance of falling down due to the agitated mind. Mukam Kroji Vachalam Pangam Laite Grimya Kripa Tamaham Bande Sri Guru Dinatarinam Indriyani Parani Aho Indriyavya Paramanaha Manashastu Parabhakti Buddhir Yo Buddhe Paratastu Saha. So, translation. The working senses are superior to dull matter. Mind is higher than the senses. Intelligence is still higher than the mind. And he, the soul, is even higher than the intelligence. So, this is description of the body, the hierarchy as Prabhupada says. And if we understand this, and we become determined to fix the mind on Krishna, then all these, this hierarchy will follow because the senses, mind, intelligence, so on, they all follow the soul. And if the soul follows Krishna, then, uh, as Parapada says here, then he'll get a, sen a spiritual taste and then he'll not be looking for material taste. 
which is the material problem right so uh, the basic thing is choice we have to choose but by intelligence Prabhupada talks about strengthening the intelligence so how is the intelligence strengthened by kicking out a hunkara it is a hunkara that is polluting the intelligence the intelligence is controller of the mind mind is the input the controller of the senses working or knowledge acquiring senses but the intelligence in material ignorance when we are bahir muk when we're looking to the material energy as a source of enjoyment to control and enjoy when we're looking in that way uh, the intelligence is engaged in trying to enjoy the matter but when the intelligence is engaged in veda acharya bona fide guru understanding their message and one is ready by choice again to perform bhakti sadhana then we can come to a realization of krishna and then gradually we can overcome attachment to the senses right attachment to the senses means rebirth right live like a pig become a pig live like a deva become a deva live like a rakshasa become a rakshasa so on and so forth there you have a choice of eight million four hundred thousand categories of life of bodies huh? but as Prabhupada mentions there we all have a constitutional position of the soul right therefore directly understanding the constitutional position of the soul is the solution to the whole problem that is the swarup we have a soul but that soul is like a seed inside a seed is a plant a form a swarup so bhakti sadhana when performed in knowledge with a little tapasya then the swarup awakens but the swarup does not awaken independent of understanding the supreme person because the swarup is gopi bata kamalayo dasa das anadas so unless that relationship with the supreme lord is the basis of spiritual inquiry then the swarup will not manifest because the swarup is based on seva bhav the material world is based on seva bhav to ourself we do everything for my i am ishwara i am controller i am the enjoyer but we have to understand we are prakriti not purusha we are jiva shakti shakti means prakriti we are the to be enjoyed by the supreme lord not to try to become purusha of the supreme lord in the form of the material energy because we are superior to the de- the material energy so we can have the illusion based on a kind of factual realization that yes i am superior to matter i am superior to cement i am superior to wood to matter to water i am the controller of this material world i am ravana <laughs> i am hiranyakashipu i will reverse the natural arrangements when people do bad things they'll get a good result and when they do bad things they'll get a good result because i will kick vishnu out of his position and become the supreme controller myself so of course that is very extreme <laughs> but in <laughs> in our own little way because we are bahir muk we're not realizing krishna and our relationship with krishna through seva bhav we are taking on all these material bodies sometimes deva sometimes dog uh indra right in the shastra indra he uh, was cursed he was 
doing some bad thing, he was cursed, became a pig, right? So Brahma came and he said, Indra, you can talk to pigs apparently if you're Brahma, that's no problem. Come back to heavenly planets, we need you there. You've been chastised. So what did Indra say? Oh, I love my pigs. Look at my little piglets. My wife, I have ten wives. <laughs> and here in the street, there's all sorts of delicious things. Why should I go to the Nandanandan gardens with the Apsaras? When I have my little piglets, I have my duty. <laughs> so, Brahma solved the problem. So, we become attached to matter. Uh, in different moods but that is not our swarup we have an eternal swarup own form that is intrinsic to the soul huh? that is our eternal relationship so we must direct our attention to the realization of Krishna and then our swarup will naturally awaken in relationship to that Supreme Lord Gopi Bhata Kamalaya does. What's the rest of that verse? Naham viprocha narapati nai vivaishana sudra naham vani natriya. I have nothing to do with these varnashram designations. What am I? I am the servant of the servant of the servant. So this is called Bhuta Shuddhi. It means to purify the consciousness with knowledge before performing one of the Navavida Bhaktis before chanting we should think I'm not this I'm the body before hearing Bhagavatam we should think I'm not this body when, I'm, when we're doing Smaranam we should think I'm the soul so this is very uh, simple to understand but the problem is when we're chasing the material illusion we enter ignorance we become, we lose perspective and we invent philosophies. Oh, there's a creation, but there's no creator. So I'm the creator. I created everything out of my mind. Huh? Just like Indra created those piglets. He's the creator. But Sarvakarana Karana, we discussed this point, that when we realize that the Supreme Lord is the source of everything when we understand the source is Krishna then we have a different perspective and that knowledge gives liberation and Vasudeva Savamiti, then Mahatmanas to Mampatha, Devim Prakritim. Once you realize that everything is the energy of Krishna, and I myself am the energy of Krishna, and we're all emanated from Krishna, then you become liberated. Then you can perform bhakti sadhana properly. Because bhakti, Bhagavan, bhakti, bhakta, bhava. Right? Then, they're all related. But you have to start with Bhagavan. You have to understand Bhagavan, the possessor of all objects. Krishna is the possessor of all beauty, all renunciation, all Shakti, all opulence, all knowledge, all fame. It's all emanated from Krishna. And I have emanated from Krishna. Krishna has given me existence. He's giving me maintenance. And he's giving me choice. So the bhakta, he, he does not try to gather pleasure in the external world. That is the materialist. That is Ravana. That is the Ranyakashipu. The bhakta gains pleasure in his relationship with Krishna. He gets the Bhakti Rasam Rita Sindhu. He gets Rasa. And these relationships of the Swarup, um, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is stated Mahaprabhu, I have come to make the world dance with Charibhav. Dasya Bhav. 
Sakya Bhav, Vatsalya Bhav, and Madhurya Bhav. So these are the Stai Bhav. That means the basic mood of the soul. But of course they you get mixtures. Then there are seven uh, secondary rasas. Laughter, astonishment, chivalry, compassion, anger, dread, and vijukta, ghastliness. Seven. Just like the battlefield of Kurukshetra, it's ghastly. Krishna was there. Anger. Uh, Krishna was angry with Kamsa. Uh, so all these rasas are there in the spiritual world, but they're in a pure form. But in the center of them is the stai bhavs. There's also shantaras, but that is just like the cows in Golok. They have shantaras, but it's mixed with dasya. And it's also mixed with an element of vatsalya. Oh, Krishna is going to take some milk and make butter there. So we're giving. Baladev, he is elder brother of Krishna and he is friend of Krishna. So he has a Vatsalya mood and he also has, because uh, he's elder, but he's also the friend, Sakyabha. So Radharani, she is pure embodiment of conjugal, Madhurya Ras. But then sometimes she becomes a little angry with Krishna. <laughs> she gets man, pranaya, right? So all the Rasas interchange. And then there is, so there's five primary, seven secondary, this is nectar of devotion. And then there is 33 Sanchari Bhav. They're also sometimes called Vibhav. So Sanchari Bhav or Vibhav means stimulating. Uh, they, they stimulate the mixture. Just like when you're cooking, you may put so many things in the cooking pot, but then you stir it. So the different leelas, the 33, they stir this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And the devotees, they float in this ecstasy. And that's why it's called the Rasa Leela. Uh, the Rasa Leela. And this Rasa Leela is the Leela of all the Rasa. So, last week, I mentioned the Rasa Leela and this topic is how to overcome uh, material lust by developing brain. You're all devotees, you all know this. So here in the Bhagavatam we know, it says right at the beginning, it says what to say. Nasta prayeshu abhadreshu nicham bhagavata sevaya bhagati uttama sloke bhakti bhavati naistike By regularly hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, all that is inauspicious within the heart, that means passion and ignorance, becomes placated down to practically nil. And then one can understand the leela of Krishna. Because generally, when we introduce someone to Krishna consciousness, first chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, and then Prishadam. And when, if people start to chant, the soul, the Swarup, starts to awaken, because the Maha Mantra is Krishna. So we're saying that the soul should pay attention to Krishna, not the senses and the sense objects. So the Maha Mantra is especially um, empowered in Kali Yuga with Nityananda Shakti. Nityananda is a, uh, non different from Baladev. Baladev is Guru Shakti. So when people, Guru Shakti is more merciful than uh, Krishna Shakti in one sense. Guru Shakti is, is uh, Ananga Manjari. Just like Krishna Swarup Shakti is Radharani, Ananga Manjari is the Shakti of Baladev. So Ananga Manjari in Nityananda Leela, she is Lalita Shakti. And she is Guru Shakti. She is more merciful, so it is explained if you read Ananga Manjari Samputika, that Ananga Manjari and Baladev, Guru Shakti and Shakti Ma, 
they take charge of the sadhaka very mercifully and when the sadhaka is properly qualified Ananga Manjari the younger sister of Radharani introduces the devotee to Bhakti Devi Radharani so that's the process so Guru Shakti Radharani is uh, uh, sorry Ananga Manjari is especially situated in the Maha Mantra it's the most merciful incarnation because Guru Shakti is very uh, forgiving the Guru Shakti bona fide Guru is incarnation of the Kripa Shakti just like we said there's a what's the first one laughter astonishment Kripa compassion chivalry compassion so the Guru the Acharya bona fide is an inca, in, is a manifestation of Guru Shakti Kripa Shakti Ananga Manjari so Guru is only concerned with the elevation of the disciple that is his mentality so Ananga Manjari is that Guru Shakti Lalita Shakti in uh, Nityananda Lila so we have to chant the Maha Mantra Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, and invite the mercy of Ananga Manjari, Lalita Shakti, Nichananda. And we should perform that bhajan in Vipralamba Seva Bhav. What does it mean? Vipralamba means sense of separation. So separation means I'm separated from the Ras Leela, but that's my home. I'm separated from my Swarup. <coughs> oh, sorry. But that's my nature. I'm separated from the spiritual platform because of my material attachments. So Ananga Manjari, Baladev, Guru Shakti, please pick me up. Ainanda Tanuja Kinkaram Padita Mambisha Veva Mambudo Kripaya Tava Pankaja Struti Duli Sadisim Vichintaya. So Mahaprabhu is saying that. He's saying, Anang, uh, O Nanda, you are son of Nanda Maharaj. That is to make Krishna feel very gentle because he is the son of Nanda Maharaj. So when you say, oh Nanda Maharaj, you're son of Nanda Maharaj, you're like my father, you pick me up. So this is the uh, entering into rasa. We may understand all the philosophical aspects. That's very good. But we have to enter into bhakti in bhava like i say bhagavan bhakta bhakti bhava bhakti has to be executed with bhava not with a, a mechanical function and we have to bear that in mind when we are doing bhakti sadhana when we're chanting hare krishna when we're associating with devotees when we're reading Srimad bhagavatam we, the Srimad Bhagavatam is Amala Paran. It's got no karma or jnana. It is just Rasa Shastra. It is describing the Rasa between Krishna and his devotees. So we have to be not looking just for the philosophy like we have here. The senses are superior to dull matter. Dull matter means the body. The senses are sitting within the body gathering information. They're also working. We have the working senses. The, ab above that is the mind. Oh, very interesting. Yes, all the working senses and the knowledge acquiring senses, their information goes into the mind. Very interesting. But above the mind is the buddhir. The problem is, ahankara, ahammameti has infested the buddhi. So therefore I have to overcome that with philosophical knowledge. You're not the body, Arjuna. 
Krishna tells, you are Gopi Bhatta Kamalaya Das Das Anadas. So, oh yes, then you can understand rasa. Then you can practice rasa in your chanting. You can practice rasa when you perform bhajans. You can, when you do some tapasya, you should be attentive to rasa. Because Prabhupada says there in the poor port, what is that? Vishya vinivartante nihirasya dehina raso vajam raso pyasya param drisva nivartate. Huh? The senses are uh, attached to the maya, but by experiencing a higher taste, we become fixed in consciousness. So that higher taste is the rasa. You understand? We have to develop a thirst for rasa just like in the hot season oh i need some water we have to be thirsty for rasa huh? so knowledge that's very good gives liberation but then you're in the material ocean so then you land on the beach oh i've attained the the beach the edge the marginal area of spiritual world now I want to drink water I've been drinking the salty water in the ocean I want to drink the ocean of rasa huh? so therefore it is their statements in the Rasa Shastra like that that the devotees are like honeybees flying around trying to pick up the nectar at the lotus feet of Krishna huh? They want to get that, and then once that rasa is felt, then you can give up the lower taste. Everything will fall into line, like Prabhupada has said. It's good to uh, read this very scrutinizingly, because there's lots of philosophical knowledge. So now, ah, yes. So, remember last week I was saying in the Ras Leela, chapter 33, 10th canto. So this is chapter 23, 10th canto, verse 36. Anugrahaya bhaktana manusha deha astitaha padite tadrisikrita yat sutra tadparo bhavet. When the Lord, oh, what's happened? It's given up the ghost. Oh, I thought the battery was flat. When the Lord assumes a human-like body to show mercy to his devotees, he engages in such pastimes as will attract those who hear about them to become dedicated to him. So the rasa is in the pastimes of Krishna. So the Bhagavatam is especially created to give this introductory perception of the spiritual world. Now listen to this. Well, I'll read a little of the purport. It's very interesting. Srila Jiva Goswami explains in this connection that when Lord Krishna descends to this world in his original two-handed form, out of kindness, he manifests that form in a way his devotees conditioned in human society can perceive and understand. So the form Krishna manifests when he appears is specially attuned for our understanding. Actually, the form of Radharani and Krishna and all the residents of Golok, it is unlimited beauty. Do you understand? It is unlimited potency. It is unlimited Shakti. So when Krishna appears here, he is displaying, here I am, the reservoir of all beauty, but I am manifesting in a form that can be understood by my devotees who are in this conditioned life. You understand? Because the spiritual world, the Shakti of the spiritual world is unlimited we, d we don't understand how dull this body is huh? we can hardly run we can hardly eat anything we're always sick we're always this we're the body is like a huge bundle of 
dull matter, Prabhupada said. It is so burdensome. But in the spiritual world, there is unlimited sensual delight on the transcendental platform. So Krishna comes in a form and manifests a form that can be understood. But still that form has all the potency to attract the living entity to go low. Srila Vishwanath Chakravati glorifies the Lord's conjugal pastimes. Now, this is the point. Stating that these romantic affairs have an inconceivable spiritual potency. Right? This is the Ras Lila chapter, chapter 13, 33. They have an inconceivable potency to attract the polluted heart of the conditioned souls. What is the pollution? Krishna has already said, the senses, the mind, intelligence, the sitting place of this conditioned lustful idea that we want to enjoy matter. So these pastimes of the Supreme Lord and the gopis and Vrindavan and Mother Yashoda, they have the potency to attract us. But that potency is fully available when we are liberated by Sambandha Abhideya Prayojan Tattva knowledge we must have the good Siddhanta then we can enter into the Rasa it is an undeniable fact that any pure or simple hearted person who hears narrations of the loving affairs of Krishna will be attracted to the lotus feet of the Lord and gradually become his devotees so then, we'll go right to the last one, okay. Right, this is verse 38. Brahma Rata Upavrite Vasudevanu Dodita Ani Chanchyo Yaha Gopya Swagrihan Bhagavat Priyaha After an in... <coughs> sorry. After an in entire night of Brahma had passed. That's the Ras Leela. It was one night on the earth plane of Bhumandala, but Krishna expanded it to one night of Brahma. Lord Krishna advised the gopis to return to their homes. Although they did not wish to do so, the Lord's beloved consorts compiled, com sorry, complied with his command. So they were dancing with Krishna in the Rasalila. Krishna expanded time to the night time of one night of Lord Brahma and they still weren't satisfied. <laughs> so in the spiritual in this material world, if you had four chapatis, five chapatis is too much, right? But in the spiritual world it's unlimited. Krishna's beauty, the rasa is unlimited. You never become satisfied. But we're in this body, right? If we eat one paneer dosa, we're satisfied. <laughs> so we've traded, we have traded one paneer dosa for the night time of Brahma <laughs> in the Ras Leela. <laughs> That's what we're choosing instead of that. So what do you want? Do you want one paneer dosa or do you want to dance in the Ras Leela for one night of Brahma? Think of it that way. Although they did not wish to, the Lord's beloved consorts complied with his command. Now here's the, here's the 39th. This is very famous verse. What's that? Is that Garuda and Vishnu? <laughs> that is a bit of Aishwarya Bhav there. I'll say the Sanskrit because the potency is there. Vikritam Vraja Vadhu Bir Idam Chavishno Shraddha Yanvito Nush Mud Yad Ata Vana Yad Yaha Bhaktim Param Bhagavati Prati Labhya Kaman Rid Rogam Ash apa hi noti achit reina dhiraha. 
So, this is the last verse in the Raslila chapter 33, 39. Look it up. You all have Bogotam, you're all great learned pandits. So, just remember this. Anyone who faithfully hears or describes the laws, now listen to that, anyone. It doesn't say old, young, male, female, clever, this. Huh? It says anyone who faithfully, remember Krishna 331, who faithfully follows my injunctions, that means they must have a little belief. Hears or describes the gopis' playful affairs with the young gopis of Vrindavan will attain the Lord's pure devotional service. I'll say that again. And, <coughs> excuse me. Anyone who faithfully hears or describes the Lord's playful affairs with the young gopis of Vrindavan will attain the Lord's pure devotional service. Thus, he will quickly become sober, mode of goodness, right? And conquer lust, the disease of the heart. Now, purport, Srila, the extraordinary power of Lord Krishna's conjugal pastimes is clearly revealed here. Qualitatively, the Lord's spiritual loving pastimes are the diametric opposite of material lusty affairs. So much so that simply by hearing about the Lord's pastimes, a devotee conquers sex desire. Right? We're all performing regulative principle chanting, this and that, but sex desire, oh, it, it won't leave me alone. We have to absorb the consciousness in the loving affairs of Radha and Krishna. Huh? Now what is that? That means given in the Bhagavatam, 10th canto. Then we have Sanat Kumar Samhita, the Astakala Leela, right? Then we also have Krishna Das Kaviraj's Govinda Leela Amrita, right? The Astakala Leela. And then we also have uh, Krishna Bhavan Amrita, that's the Kala Leela. So that is the expansion, those Astakala Leelas, they are the expansion of this Ras Leela in the 10th chapter, 10th uh, canto of Bhagavatam. Because they give the daily affairs in the eight daily pastimes. So in Bhakti Sadhana, Rasa Shastra, uh, in uh, Raganuga and Rati Bhava Sadhana, one remembers what the Lord is doing at the time of the day that one is experiencing. Right? One gets up for Mangalati. What Leela is that? Pratak Leela. Radha and Krishna, they're awakening in the groves of Vrindavan. Huh? And then they're, oh, they're feeling nervous. Oh, we have to go back home before our parents notice we've gone right so they send the duties the manjaris here and there then they go and then there is the morning leela then krishna goes to the forest and then krishna to take the cows then he meets radharani and the gopis secretly in the groves then they have pastimes then there's the afternoon leela then there's the evening leela and then there's they meet again huh in the moonlight again this is Astakal. So we should have a good conception of this. It's summarized. The first version available in the Vedas is the Sana Kumar uh, Samhita. It is in the Jaiva Dharma, the blue one that I published. It's also in the Chaitanya Shikshamrita. But if you study that, that's in uh, con concise form. And then Krishna Das Kaviraj, under direction of Mahaprabhu, he wrote the Govinda Leela Amrita. Then Vishnu, which is also the Astakala Leela, expanded. It is one of the days, it is on Sunday. Because on that day, Radharani and the gopis, they go to worship Krishna. Sorry, Surya. And you, if you read that, it's very hilarious. Krishna, he dresses up 
as the pujari. Radharani and the gopis come to worship Surya. It's Sunday. So R Krishna is dressed as the pujari and he chants some peculiar mantra that the gopis don't know it's him. He uh, and the gopis are rather who is this who is this pujari making his own mantras and then they realize it's krishna and they enjoy hasyaras enjoyment right laughing so that is the sunday leela and that is uh, given in even more poetic form by vishwanath chakravati so this is the Astakala Leela and there is a summary of the Govinda Leela Amrita with eight seed verses for each of the eight time periods. So we can learn those and then when we're walking here and there in this world we can remember, oh at this time Radha and Krishna are awakening, it's time for Mangalarti. Oh at this time they're, ha they're feasting, Radharani has cooked a feast uh, when we're having breakfast prashad. It might be better in Golok, I, I don't know. The Kitchari, I think. Anyway, they don't cook in aluminium pots. Anyway, so... <laughs> so we can remember this is how we become engaged. This is engaging the mind. Because we're going through the day, we remember the Leela of Krishna that part of day. And this is performed on the basis of liberated condition because you know Sambandha Avide Priyoja. You've gained Bhakti Siddhanta. You've gained knowledge and you're ready to perform tapasya of regulated application. And then you can realize Krishna. And when you realize Krishna, then you realize your relationship with Krishna. And as Prabhupada says here, that is the solution to the whole problem. Right? The whole problem is we're living in this body. We're not living in our Swaroop. You understand? The Swaroop is not fully just like the seed. The seed has the plant. So, Prabhupada, it's in the Bhakti Rasamrita, the Bhakti Lata Beej sprouts, it grows the plant. That means the Swaroop is gradually manifesting. So by rag bhakti, rag sadhana, we develop the swarup. But we must know what we are doing. You understand? We shouldn't just follow mechanically chanting, mechanically going mangalati. Yes, I'm doing everything correctly. No, we should put our heart and soul in it. But it is our secret. Rupa Goswami gives the a description a woman has a paramour she's married but she has a secret lover now this is not materially recommended but Rupa Goswami uses this example he says so that woman she's cooking for the babies and the children and the husband oh yes master how are you you've been working hard very nice but in her mind What's she doing? She's thinking, he'll go to sleep soon and, <laughs> and I'll meet my beloved, right? So, the devotee, he performs all these material duties. Huh? Washing clothes, going bathroom, this and that, brushing the teeth. But in his mind, he is serving Krishna in his swarup, in his awakening swarup. That is the meaning of Nikunja Yuno Ratikeli Siddhai. Huh? So we should have a good understanding of Prayojan Tattva. And this is it. And then when the mind is full of Krishna Leela, then this uh, Papadam Leela is forgotten. By reading pornographic literature, or hearing about material romance, we certainly do not conquer sex desire, but rather increase our lust. But hearing of reading about the Lord's conjugal affairs has exactly the opposite effect. 
because they are the opposite nature, being purely spiritual. Therefore it is by the causeless mercy of Lord Krishna that he exhibits his Ras Leela within this world. If we become attached to this narration, we will experience the bliss of spiritual love and thus reject the perverted reflection of that love which is called lust. As nicely put by Lord Krishna in Gita 259, Param Drisva Nivartate. See? Same. Once having de experienced the Supreme, one will not return to material pleasures. Right? So this is the problem. Many devotees experience. They take to Bhakti Sadhana for two, three years, but then the steam builds up in the kettle. Because they haven't taken it off the fire. So the steam, oh, for three years I've been in the Brahmachari Ashram, I'm going mad. <laughs> they become political. Okay, get married and have regulated in that way. But you have to take the water off the boil. And that means you have to become the consciousness, the inner senses, the mind has to become involved in remembrance of Krishna's Ras Leela. Huh? If we just externally parrot the mantra, externally learn to put on tilak and go here and there, yes, I'm doing everything nicely, yes, Mr. Temple President, I'll sell books, but we're not internally absorbed, huh? then the lid will blow off the kettle <laughs> or it'll tend to so this is the way so everyone should have uh, you can get the Jaiva Dharma I recommend to everyone the blue cover 700 rupees Sharanga Thakur the Ashtakala Leela is there Rasa Tattva is there you become absorbed in that and a final word. I quote this many times because this is Ish Upanishad. This is Veda Vyas. One should know perfectly well about the personality of Godhead and his transcendental name, as well as the temporary material creation with its temporary demigods, men and animals. When one knows these, that you should know the spiritual world, you should know the material world and how it works, the senses and the devas and all that. When one knows these two, he surpasses death. And in the ephemeral, com oh sorry, and the ephemeral cosmic manifestation with it. Ephemeral means temporary and in the eternal kingdom of God Goloka Gokul he enjoys his eternal life of bliss and knowledge so at the beginning of bhakti it's very we must learn the material world how it works we must learn rasa tattva how the spiritual world works learning about the material world kalos meham huh? understanding this nature of the material world then we become attached to the Ras Leela of Krishna and then we realize Krishna Prabhupada in the purport do you remember the devotee has a direct connection with Krishna direct huh there's nothing between you and Krishna. You're the answer of Krishna. So you have a direct. And what is those, remember we, uh, a month ago we, talked, we were talking about smaranam. Three things when you do smaranam of Krishna and you want your direct. You give up attachment to the sense objects. You give up focus on the body. You give up focus on the mind. You become absorbed in consciousness. Within the consciousness is the soul. 
and then the soul you situated in Brahman then you situate in Paramatma the Aishwarya aspect and then you situate the soul the focus of your attention in Bhagavan and Bhagavan means to be focused on the Leela of Bhagavan and this is what you must do especially if you're three times uh, if you're mantra initiated you should do this uh, Trisangam right you do this small meditation and then you chant the mantras but you can do that at any time and at any time you can chant Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare okay so very simple isn't it philosophy very simple <laughs> okay thank you all very much uh, any question okay we went a bit over time we'll blame it on the two font thank you all very much Srila Prabhupada Brindavan Dham Bhagavad Gita Sarusanga Ki Jai